Hi, I'm Jeff Lovell, a staff accountant with AA Accounting, and today I want to talk about some strategies to maximize your Social Security benefits in retirement. There are three types of Social Security retirement benefits, the worker benefit, the spousal benefit, and the survivor benefit. Your monthly retirement benefit is based upon how much you earned over your lifetime. The Social Security Administration only considers the 35 highest earning years. As long as you pay into Social Security at least 40 quarters, in other words 10 years during your lifetime, you'll be entitled to a minimum benefit in retirement. Maximizing your worker benefit comes from coming as close as possible to earning max earnings in 35 of your working years, since any earnings over the annual cap are ignored. For workers retiring in 2016 at full retirement age of 66 or in future years 67, will receive approximately a 3% per year increase for cost of living, and delaying receiving Social Security between ages 62 to 70 approximately increases your benefit by 8% per year. As you can see on the table below, your benefit is based on how much you earned during the top 35 years of your life. Those in a lower income bracket who earned roughly 25% of the maximum benefits will receive roughly $900 per month at age 62. Delaying until age 66 earns them an additional 33%. Those in a higher income bracket who earn 75% of the annual cap get almost $2,700 per month by delaying until age 66. To earn a spousal benefit, you must be married for at least 10 years to a spouse who has paid into Social Security. After this point, you will be entitled to a spousal benefit even if you later divorce. However, you will lose the spousal and survivor benefits if you remarry someone else prior to turning age 60. There are three primary strategies for increasing Social Security benefits for married couples. You can delay the higher earner's benefit until the spouse is maximized. You can delay both spouses' benefits, and you can take advantage of the IRS's qualified joint venture. Delaying the higher earner's benefit is a well-known strategy for maximizing Social Security. The higher earner delays going on Social Security until reaching full retirement age or even age 70, while the lower earning spouse takes a spousal benefit in the meantime, generally at age 62. At retirement, both spouses then draw Social Security at the higher fully vested worker and spousal benefit amounts. Another option is to delay both spouses' benefits until retirement age or even age 70. This will maximize Social Security benefits thereafter and is useful for retirees who expect to live well into retirement years and have other forms of income to support themselves in the meantime. This strategy can minimize taxes over the course of your retirement years since up to 85% of Social Security benefits can be retaxed when you earn other income during retirement. Taxpayers with a sufficient IRA or 401k income could live off of that for a few years until they've maximized Social Security benefits for both spouses. By delaying Social Security benefits until later years, taxpayers can limit their total tax burden on the same amount of income, since Social Security is taxed in a more preferential way. For example, taxpayers who wish to structure their income to earn $90,000, regardless of whether it comes from Social Security benefits or other types of retirement, would do well to delay their Social Security until age 70, since they would save roughly 75% on their total tax bill per year. Married couples in which only one spouse earns income could benefit by having both spouses pay into Social Security. This can be done without increasing your income by simply treating your self-employed business as a partnership and paying in half the Social Security payments under each spouse's Social Security number. 
The result is that both spouses will have earned credit towards their worker benefits, which can increase retirement income substantially in some cases. Married couples must be careful to follow the IRS's rules for qualified joint ventures, however, to qualify. Those who have earned both a worker and a survivor benefit prior to entering retirement have a choice of whether to claim the survivor benefit or the worker benefit at age 62. Ideally, in most situations, widows and widowers would do best by claiming the survivor benefit up until age 70 and then switching to the full worker benefit. But this strategy may not be available to you if you haven't paid into Social Security or if your worker benefit is less than your survivor benefit. Remember that you can always check with the Social Security Administration either in person or on their website at ssa.gov for more information about what's best in your specific situation. If you have questions regarding the topics covered in this video or any other tax or accounting questions, give us a call at AA Accounting. Call us today to set up an appointment to discuss your tax situation with one of our tax experts. We can help.